So you're interested in a career in DevOps. You've heard some good things about it, heard that there's a lot of demand for it, but you didn't really know a lot about it, so you wanted to see what it was like. So you ended up going to a bunch of what is DevOps videos on YouTube, and now you're even more confused than ever. All right? Probably. So this is a video about just an average day in my life doing DevOps stuff. And my day has changed a little bit over the years as I went from being a DevOps employee for a company to running my own company. So my day is a little bit different, but I think it's still going to be useful for you to see this because I get access to a lot of different technologies and a lot of different projects that I wouldn't have access to if I were working for a single employer. So let's jump into it. Get the fuck out of bed, bitch, go. Most of the time, my day starts at 4.45 a.m., except for the days when I wake up before my alarm, which is most of them. And I don't see that as a bad thing. To me, that's a pretty good sign that things are going right for me whenever I'm so excited to start my day that I wake up before my alarm clock goes off. So I'll make coffee, and then usually by 5.30 a.m., I'm at my desk checking emails, alerts, and logs, just looking for anything that might have happened during the night that requires immediate action. Um, well, semi-immediate action, because if it required immediate action, it would have paged me on my phone in the middle of the night. So anything that didn't do that maybe still is urgent, but uh, wasn't urgent enough to roll me out of bed. Since everything looked good there, I started working on this project I have going for a client. We're migrating an app that currently runs in Docker containers on a virtual machine, and we're moving it over to Kubernetes. So the app itself has multiple components to it. It's got a Node.js API, a React UI front end. There's a RabbitMQ messaging cluster, Elasticsearch cluster for searching, and a PostgreSQL database. And so all of that's going over to Kubernetes. And currently we deploy that with Ansible. And the secrets that are used by the apps are stored using Ansible Vault. So the steps for moving this over involve we're pulling the secrets out of Ansible Vault and putting those over in HashiCorp Vault. And then I'm creating new deploy scripts for the applications themselves because right now they're running as part of a Docker Compose service. And when we're done with this migration, they'll be running as Kubernetes services on Kubernetes. The Docker containers themselves aren't really going to change a whole lot. The main things that will change are how the app gets deployed, obviously where it gets deployed to, and then how we pull the secrets in because currently we're injecting those secrets in as environment variables into the Docker container. But with uh, HashiCorp Vault, they, those will be mounted as a read-only volume inside the Docker container. So we'll be modifying the app so that it pulls those secrets from that read-only volume instead of looking as looking for them as environment variables. After working on that for a couple of hours, it's time to head to the gym. I change up my workouts quite a bit based on one, how I'm feeling, and two, where I think I need to be working. But it's usually some kind of a mix throughout the week of doing heavy weight for a low number of reps, doing a lighter weight for a high number of reps, moving really quickly for a short, intense period of time, and then doing longer workouts where it's just sustained movement for a longer period of time. Today's workout was five sets of back squats. So there was one set of back squats every three minutes for five sets. And each set of back squats consisted of five reps. After that, I did cleaning jerks, one set of cleaning jerks every two minutes for five sets and then finished off with five sets of five pull-ups every minute on the minute. Then it was back home, showered, and get dressed for work. And I think that's really important because most of us are working from home. I've been working from home for several years now. And one of the most important things I think you can do is get dressed as if you were going into an office because it just shifts your mental mindset when you do that. You know, when you're, when you're doing something, if you're dressed for work, you approach it different mentally. It just puts you in the right frame of mind. Whereas if you don't dress for work and you're still wearing your 
sweatpants or whatever it is you happen to be lounging around the house in, for me it feels like not only am I physically dressed down, but I'm mentally dressed down as well. I finished that up just in time to jump into my first meeting with a client for the day. And in this meeting, this particular client has some AWS RDS database instances that were on reservations and those reservations have expired. So we went through all the databases that they have, took a look at utilization, and we're deciding which ones we can actually scale down to run on a smaller sized instance. And after that process completes, we're going to renew all of the RDS reservations. That process in itself is going to result in saving them about 25% on their database costs over the on-demand pricing. So one of my coworkers has farted in the office and it's just downright nasty. They're both ignoring me, but we're going to have to evacuate the office for a while, so we're heading outside. While I'm out here, I'm continuing to work on that migration project of getting those applications from running on the Docker, running on the virtual machine as Docker containers over to Kubernetes. One of the things that makes this easier is I have a Kubernetes, a local Kubernetes cluster here at my home office, so I'm able to do all the migrations and test it locally before I end up pushing it out to production or staging servers inside the network. At 11.30 I've got a client meeting and this is part of that same app that I've been working on or the same migration that I've been working on. Uh, but this particular aspect of it, we're using this API and UI to gather data from different data stores throughout their network and pull it into a central location on an NFS file share. So in this meeting we were discussing the data contracts between the different apps to make sure that each app that is communicating with each other is using a standardized format and we know in that communication which parameters are required, which ones are optional, and what data to expect in each one. The communication between apps itself happens over RabbitMQ, so all of the apps are decoupled from each other. If one app needs information from one of the others, it just posts a message onto a RabbitMQ queue where it will be picked up by the appropriate app that will do its thing with it and upon completion it will post a message back to a different queue to notify that app that it's completed whether that completion is successful or failed either way that app is just letting the calling app know that it's done finishing that meeting brings me right up to noon where I have my first meal of the day and take a little break after my break's over, I start working on a different project where I'm migrating data inside of a secure VPN network. That means I don't have any access to the internet while that VPN tunnel's connected. I use my backup laptop to do that so that I still have access to email, instant messenger, and the internet while I'm doing it. But one thing I've noticed during, during this project is it's funny how many of the apps I use will actually fail to load when I'm connected to that VPN because they all of a sudden don't have internet access and can't reach out and phone home to whoever it is that they were trying to phone home to. As far as the backup laptop goes, I have backups for all the equipment that I need to bill clients, generate income, and feed my family. That way if uh, my primary laptop fails, I can either fix it or send it out for repair, whatever the case may be, and I've still got my backup laptop, which allows me to continue working for clients. I worked on that up until about 4.30, then took another break and spent some time cooking dinner, eating dinner, and this is the time of day when I will watch one episode of TV on Netflix, and then after that, clean up the dinner dishes and it's back to work. This later part of my day though is typically focused on non-DevOps work. So it's things more related to running my business like invoicing clients, marketing, and creating YouTube videos like this one. I'll work on that for a couple of hours and then usually later on in the day around 8.30, 
Um, I'm just calling it a day and I'll use the remainder of the day for catching up on reading, studying, writing, so that I keep my skills up to date because that's actually a huge component of being successful and maintaining your employability for, throughout your career, whether you're in DevOps or software engineering. You know, technology is always changing. And so to work and be successful in this industry is a commitment to lifelong learning to keep up with technology as it changes. So one thing you'll notice that I didn't actually talk about in the video is CICD and it gets a lot of attention in DevOps and by all means it is an important component of DevOps but I found throughout my experience that it's probably the one facet of DevOps that I spend the least amount of time on. Typically for a new client or a new customer we'll spend a lot of time getting all of that set up but then once it's set up you really don't have to touch it aside from just doing regular updates and maintenance that you would with any software project. And that was the case with the clients that you saw me working with today. It's all either in place or set up to be taking place in the near future when we hit the appropriate point. There you go. That's my day. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and give it a like down below and also give my channel a subscribe and then turn on the notifications and you'll get notified whenever I release new videos about DevOps for developers. Thanks and uh, I'll see you next time.